I was just reading today uh, a blog that somebody circulated to me about a priest who um, throws the Eucharist on the ground instead of giving it to somebody on the tongue. Um, and I was just going to think, well, do I blog about this? Do I not? And after thinking about it for a while, I said, look, I'll blog about it in roundabout terms without mentioning the place or the priest because maybe the priest is having a bad day maybe he's having a vocational crisis who knows um but it seems on the 23rd of um uh on the 24th of of april uh, a, a, one of the a singers at mass he went up to communion and because he was holding a guitar the the priest wouldn't give him the communion on the tongue um, and in previous masses he had only insisted on giving communion on the hand and it seems like he held out the communion and it, and it he just let it fall on the ground um, because and I and I've seen this with a couple of priests you know when you go up to them asking for them for communion uh, on the tongue which is the universal norm of the Roman rite there is this division in the cat in the Roman rite at the moment about some priests who will insist at all costs to only giving communion on the hand if they even give communion because in some masses after 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 he, the com priests can take communion he'll just sit down and let the laity give out communion yeah some pre this is a, a growing trend in some countries where priests won't even bother giving out communion i i've seen it at masses where you know a priest who is the minister of, of the eucharist just to remind people, the priest, uh, ordained priests, they are the ministers of the Eucharist. The laity are not ministers of the Eucharist. Laity can be extra, extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion. So in extraordinary circumstances, um, the church has made provisions. But, you know, the, the minister, the, the priest is the minister of the Eucharist. Um, and, and, you know, here we see this growing divide in the church where... It seems we don't really know what to do with the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. We've come to a point now in the Catholic Church, in the Roman Rite at least, we don't know what to do with the body of our Lord anymore. We don't have a unified way of treating the body of our Lord anymore in the Eucharist as Roman Catholics. Do we give it on the tongue kneeling? Do we give it on the tongue standing? Do we give it on the hand? Who gives out the Eucharist? Do we allow traditional practices to return? Do we ban traditional practices? Um, we have three types of priests, it seems. We have traditional priests, which will only ever give communion uh, on the tongue uh, and kneeling if possible. And we have um, the Novus Ordo rite, where we have a divide where some priests will promote communion on the tongue and other priests will go the opposite direction and and promote it on the hand or won't even promote giving it out at all they they'll say oh there you go you take the ciborium there mr layman and mr laywoman and go off now around the church and and give it out because i'm sitting down here at mass uh, i couldn't be bothered handling that body of our lord sure that's not that's not job that us priests do anymore you know and, and i people will think i'm being a bit uh, facetious here i'm being a bit uh, tongue-in-cheek but I've, as I've blogged about before, I go to any mass, you know, because Christ is present, body, blood, soul and divinity. His divine presence is in the Eucharist. If it's said, as the ch if the priest consecrates as the church has intended, using the form and matter as the church has intended, you know, our Lord is present there. Uh, we, we, we hope and pray. Um, and, you know, it's, it's sad to see what has gone on. And I suppose I'm going to continue to blog about this um, because it's, it, it causes me great pain to see a priest not knowing his vocation. That's the sad thing. That's why I'm not mentioning the priest's name or where this, this took place because I don't know all of the details around that man's life. Um, so I don't really want my blog uh, going out there casting uh, a light on this particular priest or, or on his bishop and people emailing him or calling them um, but I just want to talk about what happened there because two people saw this priest throw the Eucharist on the floor it wasn't just one man so and they've blogged about it because this is what the priest did you know he held it out and he was playing with it and then boop 
okay, okay, we don't know all the facts and we don't know what the priest said, but, um, you know, I've seen it. I've been denied communion because, oh no, we don't give out communion on the tongue anymore. And, uh, you know, open your hands. Um, oh, really, it's it's very, very, very sad. Um, and, and, and But I, I do want to remind priests and bishops as a layman, uh, I do want to remind priests and bishops, don't, if you're wondering why there's a crisis in the priesthood, why there's a crisis in the priesthood, look at yourselves. Look at what you've done to the body of our Lord. What what type of, of um, message are you giving to men looking at your vocation? What type of message do you give to teenagers, to children, to families? when you don't have your own identity anymore. Uh, so many priests don't dress like priests. So many priests don't act like priests. So many priests don't know what to do with the body of our Lord. Uh, and that's that's an observation. That's not a judgment. That's me observing what is happening in the church today. Um, and we see the symptoms of bad formation. You know, if there's one message I could give priests, look at our Lord. Model yourself on him. He is the person you need to imitate and to bring out into society. When Christ was at the Last Supper, he gave communion to his apostles, to only men. He ordained only men. You know, apostolic succession is only to men, is only for men, and this is the faith of the church for the last two thousand years, east and west. Uh, he he entrusted his body to those men and that's the simple reality to do this in memory of him so you know we have the memory of our lord uh, to pass on to every generation and, uh, and i do ask the church now to have do your own self-examination on what are you, what have you done to the body of our lord in the church this inconvenient reality of the body blood soul and divinity of our lord inconvenient in the sense we we have this constant innovation and change constant innovation and change um yesterday i was talking about archbishop lefebvre and and when archbishop lefebvre met uh john paul ii in the 1970s he said he had no problems accepting second vatican II as long as it was interpreted in the light of tradition we can see how we handle the eucharist today is in no way interpreted in the light of tradition it's not in, it's not interpreted in even the light of Second Vatican II. Nothing nowhere was it mentioned in Second Vatican II. Uh, nor was it mentioned to destroy reverence to the Eucharist and to the way that we have done it today. Because you know, you know we don't inspire a generation to reverence our Lord the way we treat the Eucharist today. We don't inspire the church. We're not inspiring anybody. Um, you know, and I suppose it's not a it's not a um, universal issue. You know, there are good priests. I was very very impressed while I was in Poland. The Capuchin friars, where my mother in law's funeral was held, in the Capuchin friary, um, you know, everybody went up and received communion on the tongue. Everybody, you know, it would be it would be inconceivable. You would see this in a novus ordo mass in Ireland. Just, you know, but what ha why are Polish Catholics so different? Why did Polish Catholics retain their reverence and faith in the Eucharist? It wasn't just the Capuchins. You know, it was um, the, the cathedral in Kielce receiving communion, kneeling on the tongue if they could kneel. You know, it was, and, and it was only priests um, who are ministering the Eucharist. It was only Capuchin friars ministering the Eucharist, no laity. No extraordinary lay ministers of Holy Communion. And I think it's very sad. A lot of people are well intended and they want to help the church and they and they want to and they love the faith and want to grow the faith. And they think, oh, I'll be an extraordinary minister of Holy Communion as if this is going to renew the faith. And it hasn't. It hasn't. In the West, in Europe, you know, I think turning our backs on our own traditions uh, and what we held sacred hasn't helped us one single bit in in Europe, in Ireland, in England, in North America, Latin America, you know, in these countries. So, you know, I, I, 
I think there's an examination of conscience that needs to be here. This loss of identity. You know, a, a priest is supposed to be set apart. He's supposed to be sacred. He's supposed to be a sacred minister. And that's his co- That's a calling. That's not being clerical. That's just a calling. Christ calls you to be set aside, to minister for him, to be him, to imitate him, to bring his sacred heart into, into the church. That's the call of a priest. Um, you know, I, I remember years ago sitting at dinner in a restaurant and in came a family, a very, very wealthy family, and they were bringing their children to dinner and they had a nanny. They actually had two nannies with them. You know, at any time that the child got a bit, you know, the mother would say, can you look after that? Can you look after that child there? Can you like, I, you know, they're my children, but like, uh, I just don't want the hassle of having to deal with these things. And I think what we've done now in the church now, priests, what priests have done is they've turned to the laity. Can you look after our Lord? Can you look after our Lord? I just don't have the time or the effort or the love to be dealing with that body of our Lord Jesus Christ. You go out and give it around the church. I've seen it in very, very small settings and small masses where a priest could not be bothered to minister the Eucharist. You know, and then we're scratching our heads. What has gone on with vocations? What has happened to the, the priesthood? Why is the priesthood in crisis? Why is this? Why is that? You know, in, in married life, you know, a man will be in crisis in married life if he doesn't know what his vocation is in married life. If you get married and you have kids and you don't spawn bother spending any time with your kids or paying attention to your wife or you know focusing on your family and you're focused on other things you know a kid secondary those things i sure the nanny look after them or let's do something i couldn't be bothered with them if you don't focus on what's essential in your marriage your marriage will fall apart your marriage will fall apart your children will fall apart your children will be depressed your children will be so when my father never paid me any attention my mother never paid me any attention and it's the same thing in the priesthood. If you are not focused on our Lord Jesus Christ and doing what he's asking you to do on the vocation that he has called you to do, to be a minister of his body, your priesthood will fall apart. And that is what is happening. You know, a priest is called to be a minister of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we so, we look at why are so many priests uh, depressed or why are they off doing things that have mean nothing to their priesthood and looking for attention that means nothing in their priesthood because they, they, they've they lost their identity. And it's not their fault. This is how they've been trained. This is how it's, this is the formation that they've been given because, you know, sadly we've had uh, a very, you know, the, you need some structure. You know, and I suppose, you know, the legionaries of Christ have got a bad rap. But my experience as being in a seminary, it was, there was a lot of good routine there. And, you know, there was kind of strange, strange formation in a sense, knowing who founded the legionaries of Christ. But um, I suppose he couldn't have been able to grow that organization if there wasn't some structure and... Um, formation uh, some type of 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 formation that uh, uh you know focused a man's mind you know and there was structure there was routine there was a timetable uh we you know the eucharist was reverent i mean we only knelt and received our lord on the tongue and i suppose our, uh, marcel would never have been able to grow the legion unless he plagiarized these structures from other locations from the opus day or from wherever uh, and for good or for bad, you know, these, uh, you know, a structured life, an ordered life, a disciplined life, discipline works, helps, you know, it does help. You know, if you do routine and discipline and structure in your life, it does work. And sadly today, too many priests don't seem to have this. And especially now when it comes to Eucharistic reverence, um, we're asking our question, we're asking what's going on in the church? What is going on? What is, and it's not just one priest. I've seen it with my own eyes, several priests. I don't like blogging about it or because you put a priest's name on a blog like mine, people will listen to me. They will criticize the priest. They will write to his bishop. And and maybe I don't have all the facts. And then you're shining a light on some, on some particular priest. Um, so I'm just blogging in broad terms about a specific blog post today. 
uh, about a priest who threw down the Eucharist. Um, and, and I just ask other priests, you know, uh, and bishops, you know, the crisis in the church will only be solved by leadership, strong leadership. You know, if an army, a milita- military army acted the, the, the way the church acts, uh, you know, it, it, a country would be destroyed. You know, if the American army had the discipline that we seem to have, that seems to have the, the, the lack of discipline, the lack of organization that seems to have been have invaded the Catholic Church, they'd be the laughing. Well, there there is a lot of issues there, but do you know what I mean? We have to tackle problems with leadership, with discipline, uh, correctly, especially when it comes to passing on the faith in the Eucharist. The Eucharist is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord. The real presence we call it as Catholics, you know, and we should safeguard our Lord's body by respecting how we give communion. And in the Roman Rite, we did this by giving it on the tongue for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. And this practice was nurtured in the church, fostered by the Holy Spirit. Why? Because it protected the fragments of the Eucharist. And today we don't, so many people don't believe because we don't give witness to this. We don't give witness and so many, there's such a crisis in the Catholic faith in, in Ireland and other places because we don't give true witness to the Eucharist. Especially, you know, adoration, uh, spending time with our Lord. People say, oh, our Lord didn't give us the Eucharist for us to look at it. Uh, this isn't part of the church. Uh, you know, the Eucharist is to be eaten. It's not to be looked at. So why, what are you doing with this adoration thing? This is really what priests say. The priest, there's some priests that will never spend a minute in adoration. I know them. I know them. They would never spend a single minute in adoration in a single week. Even if they had a Eucharistic adoration chapel beside their chapel, they would not go there. Why? Um, and yet they won't pray. They don't spend time in prayer with our Lord. I think it's an, it's an incredibly beautiful opportunity. I suppose I'm not judging those priests. This is the formation sometimes that they've been given. You know, there are priests that will never pray the breviary, never pray the breviary or, or a rosary. Their life is routine without prayer. And, you know, Eucharistic reverence means very little to them. And if they survive in their vocation, it's it's a sad state that they live in. And so we have to pray for them, you know, not condemn them, not judge them, just pray for them. But, uh, you know, I would ask. I would ask priests and bishops, do your own examination. Don't come out, out to the laity and let's pray for, for vocations to the priesthood. Let's pray for, you know, it's not like the Gardaí come out. And let's pray that we get recruitments to the to the Gardaí. You know, live your vocation. Act like priests. Dress like priests. You know, you go to Poland. You see, most priests go around with a satan. Look, the simple truth in, in most towns, most religious go around and dressed as religious. Sisters go around dressed as sisters. You have a visible presence um, of, of, of the church in Poland. Now, it's not perfect. I don't think you'll ever have a perfect, you know, perfection in, in the church. But you can fight for the faith. You don't have to sit back and let it die. You know, you can decide to dress like a priest, act like a priest, offer the Eucharist with reverence and as the universal norm of the Roman rite is on the tongue. You can foster this. Or you can just sit. You know, uh, you know, you, if you if you want to change, you have to act, you know, and this is this is really what hap- uh, what we need to do in the church today is to is to awaken this conscience. And, and many people will come back to me and say, Robert, why are you going to those masses where they disrespect our Lord and the Eucharist? Well, you know, I, I go where I'm placed, where I am, where I live. And, you know, I'd love to go to traditional Latin mass more. Um, but, um, you know, Christ is truly present, body, blood, soul and divinity in the Novus Ordo. People need to remember this. Yeah, and there are many good priests that say the mass with much reverence, doing it as the church says. No, Christ is present, but um, uh, I think we've lost a lot of the beauty and the reverence in our mass. We've lost it, 
and we don't and it's not engaging people's hearts you know when we make it an entertainment uh, show then people will only go into mass if they're entertained and uh, going to mass just to be entertained and if the pre if the priest that comes in the new priest that comes in he's not entertaining oh, i'm not going to that mass i oh, know that guy oh, i'll go to that mass and uh, well, down the other parish there's a new priest down there he makes it very entertaining and the, and the mass isn't there for entertainment it's to worship our lord body blood soul and divinity is the praise and worship of, of our lord that's what the mass is anyway just pray for that priest and again i'm not sh- <laughs> i'm not here to criticize i'm just asking the church to do your own examination you know th- i mean the, the crisis in the church is so deep um that the only way out of this is strong leadership and strong leadership requires you know leadership to turn around to say look things aren't working why aren't they not working why is there bad formation why men like many men around ireland they're, they're wondering why would you not go in for the priesthood well that minute place isn't it full of gay men that's what they say this is what they say because this is what's in the media this is what's in the news if i was going to be a priest i'd go to the dominicans or i'd go there or i'd go there but i'm not going there this is what they say i mean look at what's happening you know we need you we need to you need to give structure discipline and identity uh, in your formation um i just you know just you know i love the church but you know this is this is the truth of the matter so look pray for the church pray for this priest but um we need to we need to think what are we going to do with the body of our lord in the church do we actually believe in the universal norm of the roman right to give communion on the tongue because if that's the norm why aren't we pr- promoting the norm instead of dividing the church you know because the division now you know you go to poland in the novus ordo and everybody's receiving on the tongue and you come to ireland and some priests couldn't even be bothered giving it out in the hand that's the truth there are some priests in ireland that couldn't be bothered to give communion out in the hand they'll give it to laity What's going on? What has happened? God bless you. Pray for the church. Bye.